video along the theme of um, uh, the human being being manipulated into being uh, non-productive, um, being non-sexual, uh, having our sexuality, uh, sexual organs mutilated and butchered and removed and all those sort of things, which is a very prominent theme these days, being promoted by the, the liberalist lefties. Um, and it's all about... Um, transgenderism it's about um uh having um so certain uh, sexual organs removed and sex changes and um um hormone counselors and all these different sorts of things that's going on people for those of you that uh, have some awareness about this um if you don't have any awareness about it then you can look into um uh, people like Jordan Peterson, uh, Douglas Murray, uh, even Elon Musk has been speaking about it because one of his children fell foul uh, of these evil butchers um, and he was given wrong information and he's vehemently opposed to what's going on now in relation to um, uh, young adults um, being seriously encouraged, manipulated, persuaded uh, to have um, sex changes and uh, to have prescribed uh, anti-hormone medications and all that which, um, you know, um, makes them infertile. So, of course, there's a population control agenda um, going on. Uh, and then with the leftist, uh, of course, Camilla Harris is pushing pro-abortion, whereas Trump is anti-abortion. So, of course, the pro-abortion to get rid of as many babies as possible, another way to keep the population down. Um, and just uh, to pervert to the human being and to turn things upside down and inside out. Uh, this is the sort of thing that's happening, people. Now, this is the latest. So listen to this. Scotland would have had resistance, but by doing it step by step by step by step, they're obviously now at a point where it is quite commonly accepted. However, this story, I've just got this image in my head, which is hilarious, which is you sat with your dad trying to explain to him how there's a news story about men getting pregnant and being asked when they go in the NHS if they're pregnant. And as somebody from that era going, what the hell happened to humanity to get to this point? Well, they, uh, they'd think I, you were I, joking. Uh, I, I, I was born in 1952 and, <laughs> and never mind my father, born in 1907. <laughs> I, 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 I would have the same reaction. Uh, the, the, the NHS is apparently telling radiologists when they're doing x-rays that they have to ask men if they're pregnant um, because of um, a trans uh, men, trans women. Um, of course, um, the number of um, trans people is still relatively small, massively more than it was because of the programming, but uh, still very small. So you you say to patients, look, uh, if you are a, a trans person um, uh, who can become pregnant, then tell us before you have an X-ray. That that's what the publicity should be. But instead, no, you put the uh, responsibility on the radiologist who who has to ask them a man, all men, if they're pregnant, and uh, this is basically pushing the envelope of changing um, uh, sanity into um, insanity and for insanity to become the norm. What we're looking at, Jay, is the normalization of insanity. Yeah. And that's why people like you and me and, um, and Iconic, etc., we've got to call out the insanity because if we don't, it becomes normalized by default. And this story is insane. And um, th there's a, a clip here um, 
uh, which I found on the internet, of uh, a TV doctor. This is a TV doctor who um, uh, said that the AstraZeneca uh, fake vaccine was um, uh, was safe and effective, and you wouldn't get COVID if you had it, you know, and, and you wouldn't die if you had it, and all that stuff. Um, yep. Of course, absolute nonsense. Um, but but it was the right kind of nonsense from the point of view of the system. And therefore, this lady talking that nonsense and actually seeing patients every day, which I find personally terrifying, um, uh, she's still in a job. And here she is being questioned by her fellow presenters on a program called This Morning in Britain um, on this story of um, asking men if they're pregnant. New guidance requires radiographers to ask whether men aged 12 to 55 could be pregnant. Men um, aged 12. If you look at it, the guidance is saying that they don't want people to make assumptions about a patient's gender identity. Um, and this comes on the back of a um, transgender man who unknowingly went, underwent a CT scan whilst pregnant. Okay, right. I've got a few issues about this. So why should every trans man, biological man, be asked that question? Because... To me, if I went in to have an x-ray, mm. that's an, in a medical setting, yeah. surely they would have my medical notes in front of them to say my gender, my birth gender, yeah. whatever I identify as. If, if, if I went in for an x-ray and the person who is giving me medical treatment asked me, can I ask you pregnant? I wouldn't feel comfortable with that person giving me medical treatment because as someone who's not a trans man, I've got a lot of trans friends, but as someone who's not a trans man, I'd be like, are you all right? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I suppose we ask all women that come in um, whether they're pregnant prior to having um, a, a scan anyway. So it, I, I know what you're saying, it's, you know, it's, it's the onus is on the person, but we, we ask all women anyway. So in that same way, we're saying, actually, let's open this up and make sure that we're considering no, non-binary, transgender, intersex patients. I mean, look, I get it, but I think women... Hang on, right hang on now. Uh, so, okay, because, well, we ask all women, so, well, uh, we're just opening it up and we're just going to ask, ask everybody. And so, can you, look, these people, they buy this stupid bullshit without thinking where this stuff is coming from and where this stuff is going. Uh, they've got no idea that they are being programmed and brainwashed and manipulated, and there is a war on the sexes and the war on the human being. These stupid fools have got no fucking idea what's going on. The, the, the idiocracy is astounding, people. Oh, my God. How? Well, I mean, you wouldn't think um, the, the powers that be could get away with this nonsense. But because the masses are absolutely dumb as fuck, they will get away with any fucking thing. And so they're not arguing about the idiocracy of it. They're not arguing about the absurdity of it. They're not saying they're insulting people's intelligence. We're just not going to do that. If a man comes in, a man's a man. He can't get pregnant. And that's it, period. But no. Oh, well, I mean, we're just opening it up. And, well, we ask women. So, well, well we ask men. We don't want to feel the... Feel that we don't want them to feel excluded. Um, they might be identifying as women, but if they've got cock and balls, they're not women, right? They're men. Uh, people, you have to start thinking about the ramifications of this because this is the end of the human being. A boy going in for an x ray and saying, Are you pregnant? That's going to confuse that. Yeah. I'm not too sure, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, just to get to go back quickly to, to her comments on the COVID vaccine, she said that within seven days of one vaccine, given you were told to have two, apparently, of AstraZeneca, you were 100% um, protected from hospitalization and death. Now, given that Philip Schofield, who was presenting the show at that point, even went like that when she said that, goes to show how ridiculous and fraudulent that claim was, because the fact that even he reacted with a bit of an inquisitive face shows how insane that is. And the fact that she was never arrested for misinformation or um, removed from office or had a medical license revoked is staggering. But yeah, she's still here and still talking complete crap. And it's, it's incredible that the presenters opposite, the man a little bit more than the woman, aren't laughing and, and telling her how ridiculous this is. 
they're kind of they're having a genuine adult discussion about it as if it's something that should be discussed when it's completely bonkers. Yeah, but that but it's it's a, a very simple um, criteria. Um, if you're a TV doctor, you give the system's version of everything because if you didn't, you wouldn't be yeah. a TV doctor. Very simple. 100%. And that's why she's still there. And that's why she's obviously been protected. But where does this end? Because for me, this is, this is the, yeah. the people who are massively insulted by this are women. Because, you know, the whole point of making men and women the same, which we're not, is that women have a superpower of being able to carry life and, and breed new life. Men don't. So to, to ask men if they can get pregnant, yes, it's, it's just it's crazy. But it's also massively insulting, I think, to women, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. But you see, um, you know, I've gone into great detail about this in the books over the years, uh, interviews and stuff. Um, they are... Uh, and this again is another dot to connect into what we talked about earlier with the fake vaccines and the self-replicating. By the way, I'll put the link down to uh, this video because um, this video is on banned video, uh, banned dot video, uh, because um, uh, no platform wants to entertain David Icke because he just tells the public how it really is. And um, he's been doing it for 30 years. He's written over 20 books. He's banned from every single country on the planet. He used to um, do lectures all over the world, but now, uh, of course, uh, he's been cancelled. Um, he's been cancelled from every country in Europe. The only one remarkably remaining, uh, and recently he, he's actually on a tour now in Britain. Um, and I don't know, I can't think for the life of me how he's getting away with that. Um, um, but uh, he is so far, but um, I'm pretty sure stars the Starmer, uh, our new prime minister or dictator, uh, should we say, will be putting a stop to that. In nanotechnology and the synthetic materials being infused in these vaccines, um, they are um, aiming for a non-procreating human uh, of the kind that um, was described by Aldous Huxley, an insider, in his book *Brave New World* in 1932. How can you, how can you know that in 1932? Ah, because these are two levels of knowledge: the world of the the, the cult and the world of the general population. Now then, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, uh, written in 1932, as he just said, um, uh, was a utopian movie um, which was supposed to be how the future is going to be. And in that movie, there is no procreation. Uh, all of the offspring are um, created in factory settings um, with artificial insemination. There are no mothers and there are no fathers. The children are reared by nannies from the state and uh, everybody is equal and it's all free love and there's no marriages and there's no uh, partners and there's no commitment and all this sort of stuff. And so you can see that um, Aldous Huxley, who wrote that book in 1932, knew how it was going. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't just by a stroke of genius and look that he uh, wrote that movie or that book originally. He knew what was going on from people inside. They've had it planned, people, for a long, long time. And, of course, you'll notice in the book of Thomas, it was already written then. And it's written in the Old Testament and it's written in the New Testament. You just got to know where you look and you just got to listen to the right sort of people that's going to be uh, interpreting it for you. So um, they know about things long, long before the general population ever find out. They only find out what is happening. Uh, and so the, the idea is you um, transform the human body from a male-female procreating um, system into uh, one where the species is procreated technologically, as, um, as Aldous Huxley described. And this explains, another dot, why um, 
we have the the trans movement being so uh, massively um, promoted. It's because if you're going to uh, transform people physically, you first have to get them psychologically. And so what you're doing, and again, it's the young, you're bombarding them with um, uh, the trans agenda where you are saying, I think the BBC's talked about at some point, you know, unbelievable numbers of uh, uh, genders they say there are, uh, bloody nonsense, um, and then uh, they just make them up. Uh, and so uh, they are um, confusing the concept of gender. And you have to confuse gender. It was very simple before, male and female before you can fuse gender without um, attracting serious um, serious uh, dissent and opposition. And this is another reason why they want rid of old people, because old people find, uh, to, in general, find the whole idea um, nonsense that's, uh, that's happening. But again, to so many of the young, it's just the way things are because that's all they've ever known. Uh, and uh, so this is why um, you have this um, transgender explosion. And th this is the point. You know, I say this to the transgender activists. It ain't about you, you know. They don't care about you. It's like, it's like you know, Muslims, is, they're saying, oh, you know, mu Muslims get, get, get better treatment by the police than, 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 than white people do in Britain and all that stuff that's being said. Uh, the Muslims, they don't care about you. you. They're just using you as a pawn to play off against them. And you trans activists, oh, yeah, trans, you can't say this, well, my pronouns. They're playing you like a stringed instrument, mate, because you're just a transition um, stage to the no gender, not transgender, to the no gender human. And if you don't grasp that, then you're playing a part in your no, own demise while no. thinking yeah. it's all about you. Absolutely. And the poster boy for it seems to be Sam Smith. I don't know if you saw yesterday, just finally. He, he's come out as non-binary. He came out as gay. Then he's came out as non-binary about three times. He, once would have been enough. Uh, and yesterday he's come out as something bisexual, but is only interested in men. Even though the whole definition of bisexual is you're meant to, is you're interested in both but he's just done it again and he's like their poster boy and they're glorifying flying that and that is yeah, the definition well, of glorifying insanity, uh, insanity yeah. sorry him the, the, the uh, things that he yeah. gets up to it's, it's incredible so they have yeah i must um, remember to invite uh, sam smith around for dinner on the day i know i'm going to be out <laughs> hilarious <laughs> right i think that's it for this week's show dad yeah well there you go then people so um, he said it there. People have been saying it for a long, long time. Um, for those of you that want to learn a little bit more about this, then I would. Um, you can just go on YouTube and you can you can watch um, uh, at least um, shorter versions of Aldous Huxley's Brave New World to get the theme. Um, and even if you read the book, it isn't a long book. Um, and then you look into Bill Gates with all of his um, um, geneticist um, intentions of uh, population control and birth control. And then you look into what was going on in Africa with the, the Bill uh, Gates uh, vaccines, which were um, making hundreds of thousands of women infertile. It's been going on all over the world, people, for a long, long time. And so... Um, if you're not interested in it, fair enough. You know, if you are interested in it, then um, there's lots of uh, avenues which you can uh, uh, investigate, which is going to uh, be informing you about this global agenda. So um, I'll leave that with you. <laughs>